This is it, people. This is what you've been waiting for. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast. The podcast for everyday people with everyday problems trying to find everyday solutions to accomplish everyday goals. Let's start the show. You, 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 you. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Celebrity Podcast, number one podcast in Oakland, number one podcast in the Bay Area. And today we have a special guest like we always do, but this guest, when it comes to food, this guest is one of the top chefs, <laughs> <laughs> one of the top chefs in the Bay Area when it comes to tacos, one of the best maker of tacos. She is a Top Chef semi-finalist on Bravo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> one Wel- day. One day. We'll see. We'll Welcome, see. Myra, to the show. How are you? Hi, everyone. How was your day today? Uh, pretty good. No, Another day in the life. Yeah. Um, we're the lunch shift. In mm-hmm. Old Oak. We're located in Old Oakland. Um, wait, wait, wait. Calm down. Okay. Because <laughs> we ain't got there yet. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, so you oh, worked. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you worked? Uh yeah, I worked uh today. Um after work I went to the Berkeley Farmers Market. Uh uh-huh. So are you were you surprised that I asked you to come on? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um I was a little like I wasn't too sure, mm-hmm. you know. Um I've seen you a couple times before, but I've never formally met you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my name is Jordan. Jordan, nice, nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> um, yeah, so the reason I asked you to come on is because obviously you're doing something that stood out to me, which is a cooked, and I'm assuming that your business is yours. Uh, yes, I do have a business partner, but I'm part owner of Chingones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Chingones, can you tell the people what that is? Uh, Chingones, we're a, we're a restaurant in Old Oakland. Um, we started off as a pop-up and are kind of a permanent pop-up. At Four Green Bar in Old Oakland. Uh-huh. Um, we started at a Laney Flea Market in 2016, doing Sundays, popping up at the flea market every Sunday. Mm. Um, and we slowly like got other gigs, started popping up somewhere else, like, did San Francisco a little bit. And when me and my business partner were ready, we kind of just went on our own and started, you know, just working that full time. Chicones, what does that mean? Chingones means it's a bad word and it's a good word. Um, it just depends on how someone says it to you. Well, what what does it mean? Uh, for me, it means ba- it's like badass. No, no, not for you. What does it actually mean? <laughs> it means uh, when someone tells you you're a chingon, that means you're a badass. You're good at what you do, whatever you do. If someone tells you you, that's what it really chingon, means. Yeah, like uh-huh. if you're chingon, like means like you're 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 good at your craft, whatever it is you do. If someone says, vete a la chingada, they're like telling you like, go to hell or, go, you mm. know, so it just depends on how you say it. Who came up with that name? Uh, I did. We had a little while where we didn't have a name. Um, before I met my business partner, I wanted to start a salsa brand called Chingona. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason for that name is it reminds me of my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, she she was a single parent. Um and she, my dad passed away when I was young. I was three years old. And um, she eventually made it to California, you mm-hmm. know, with me and my uh, four other siblings. So she's like the definition of chingona, like someone that's like managed to like make it, you know, she, we all did pretty good, you know, as kids. So when you say chingona, you're just basically saying badass, but you're, you're in, in a woman. Yes. Okay. Her. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you say you were doing pop up. What? what uh, how did it? All, how did this all start? Like, did um, you go to culinary school or something? Yeah, I went to. So I went to Laney College for culinary school. But previous to that, I owned a taqueria in LA when I was like in my early twenties. Mm. Um, I was trying to grow up too quick. You know, I got a spot in uh in my and where I was where I grew up in the city of El Monte, which is in San Gabriel Valley in SoCal, and. 
it lasted about a year, a year or two, you know, mm-hmm. um, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, spent all a bunch of money just trying to open up this place and kind of lost it because I, I didn't have any experience. I just kind of thought that I could do it, you know. Um, and when I lost it, I moved to the Bay, which was 12 years ago. And would you say that was a uh, you losing that? Was that a failure or was it uh, something that you needed to go through? Uh, at first, it felt like a failure. Like even, you know, I felt like I ran away from when I moved to the Bay. I ran away from a failure. Um, I had sisters that invested money, brothers. Mm. And I kind of let them all down. So, yeah, I did definitely hurt, you know. How did it fail? Um, how did it fail? Or I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, what was it? I mean, can you pinpoint a reason? That it failed? Mm-hmm. I, was, I was young. No experience. Mm-hmm. I was partying, you know. Mm-hmm. I was in the party world. Definitely was not in the right place, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'm assuming you are Mexican, yes? Yes. I was born in Mexico. Um, I was born in Mexico. Uh, my mom brought me to California when I was five. So I, I grew up here. I don't consider Mexico my home. Um, that, that's where I was born, but I couldn't see a life for myself in Mexico if I were to, I mean, yeah. you know. You speak fluent Spanish? Sí, si, si hablo español muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> Siblings? Uh, yes, I'm the baby of 10. Of ten, uh, yeah, I have uh, oh, four damn. brothers and five sisters. All same parents. All same dad. Wow. My mom didn't have a TV, and my dad didn't have a TV in Mexico. Wait, 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 wait a minute. All <laughs> same dad. All same dad. Same Nobody dad. has the same mom. Same mom. All same, same mom, mom. Same dad. Same mom. Same dad. Yeah. Wow. Who? Uh, so how? How old was your mom when she first had her first baby? I I don't know honestly. I, my mom's 82, 81 now. Okay. She's still alive. She's she's doing great. And she's kind of, so she's kind of like my dad. My dad was uh, old as hell. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, I mean, he didn't have ten, but he had like six. Yeah. 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 Um. So you guys moved. Uh, the whole family moved when uh, you so guys came from Mexico. It was, when I say that, what, did your dad come first and was like sending you money and then sent for you guys, or did uh, you all come so together? So my dad was one of those. Uh, Mexican macho guys who didn't want my mom to come to California because he said that the women in in the states were you know they were a little too oh, yeah. much. <laughs> okay, yeah, he was. So he was he, a player. That's what. That's what. He yeah. Was. Okay. <laughs> so I probably had some siblings somewhere. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh shit. Um, but he was a migrant worker, so he would come work. Um, he used to work. He used to work for waste management in Tahoe. Mm. So he would work couple months i think like six months and then go back and forth Mm -hmm. um and then he passed away when he was like in his he was like around 45 46 um and after two years my mom decided my siblings my older siblings were already here in california Mm -hmm. and they decided they kept telling my mom you know you just got to make your way over um and she decided you know she brought us all we got a a traveling visa so we came in legally into the country um but we kind of we just overstayed our visit so none of you guys were born in the states no none Mm. no and how old were you when your dad died i I was three three yeah and when he died you said some of your siblings were here already right um how many were still in mexico when you guys came uh it was four of us four of you guys the younger ones yeah the older ones were already here and was that decision easier because for your mom because of your dad dying and she was like, yo, I need to start making money now? Yeah, I need to. Yeah, because I mean, we, my mom has a, she has some farmland in Mexico and that's how they would get by, right? Like my dad would harvest when he was coming back and forth. He was mm-hmm. the main provider. Mm-hmm. Um, And yeah, I'm assuming like, I don't, I haven't really talked to my mom about it too much, you know, and that's probably my own Thing that I have to resolve yeah. sometime and and I I just saw my mom like last week I went to go visit you know she's gonna be 82 this year and I so it's so hard for me to you know bring up that kind of stuff bring up like what stuff stuff with your dad yeah with my dad yeah I still have a hard time um I we were close that's what I hear but I don't I don't really like talk about my childhood too much I don't ask do, a lot of questions do you remember him not really no mm. 
No, I don't. Do you think, I mean, your mom is in her 80s, right? And yeah. That's around the average age where people live, right? Yeah. So let's say, I mean, this is a bad uh, scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if she was to pass, like, like next month or next year or whatever, would you regret not asking these questions? Yes, because I, my when my dad died, I didn't know shit about his life because oh, yeah. we never talked either. And yeah. then I always wondered, like, oh, what, what was his parents like? What did they even look like? Like, where did he, where did he grow up and all this other yeah. shit? What type of dude was he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I should. I mean, I do think about it. Mm. Even when I got back, I was like, I should have asked more questions. There's a, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the family. Like my sister just got diagnosed with cancer, so mm. definitely going back was a little heavy, heavy enough already. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so you know, I hopefully get my make my way. I do talk to my mom almost every day. Yeah, um, on the phone. You know, I try to keep up. Be every time I talk to her, I feel like. You know, I don't know when it's going to be the last time. Like, mm-hmm. He's definitely older. You know? Yeah, you should ask your your older siblings about your dad. Yeah. If you don't want to talk to your mom. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> advice. <laughs> um, so when you guys got here, you were three. I mean, obviously you're you're, you're young. So I yeah. mean, I mean, you probably would thought you were still in Mexico or some shit. Did you realize you were in, in America? So. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't remember a lot from my childhood. I have some depressed memories. Yeah. <laughs> trying to work that out in therapy right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but now I don't, I don't recall like when that transition happened. Yeah. Do you remember life changing, like life being different or easier or more fancier? I, but definitely that probably. I mean, I was, I was so young. I don't like, I don't remember my my home in Mexico like I don't remember my mom's house like I've seen pictures and videos now I still haven't been back I just became a resident like I it, I think it's gonna be three years now that I've, mm-hmm. I became a resident and I still haven't had a chance mm-hmm. to go back to my hometown or where I was born so when you came to the states you were living where in Los Angeles I was living in a town it's called Whittier California Whittier Whittier yeah okay and then we moved to El Monte so that's where I really that's where I grew up in Monte. Um, definitely how, a how, rough, was, rough how was growing up? Growing up, yeah. How was a lot of gangs? Teenage years. Teenagers, a lot of gangs, a lot of gang violence. You were in a gang? No, <laughs> no. I think the only reason I didn't end up in a gang or pregnant was because I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm gay. Uh, yeah. Are you scared to say that? Yeah, I don't think I've said that out loud. <laughs> um, I mean, did you always knew you were gay? Um, I mean, I tried to date like men, even in high school. Like, I had a cover up boyfriend, but mm. never literally stuck. You know? Yeah. It was hard. Like in high school, I don't think I think there was like one person that was out. Um, in high school. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely not easy. Mm. Yeah. Was, I mean, uh, a lot of Mexican families are, or parents are religious, right? Yeah. Did your mom even give a shit? Uh, I still, like, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I've never had that conversation with my mom even to this day. Oh, wow. About my sexuality. But I'm pretty sure she knows, right? Yeah, I mean, I had, a, I had a partner for 10 years, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but you never, like, together. sat down and be like, Mom, I, yeah, no. I date girls. Yeah, no. I mean, okay. that's, I think, like, another thing, like, right, I can't, it's hard for me to talk to my mom about stuff. It's always been, like, I don't know if it's, like, a culture thing, maybe, mm-hmm. we don't really talk about our feelings, there's a lot of stuff that's left unsaid. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's, that's how we grew up. I mean, but you, have you talked with your siblings about it? Oh, they know. Oh, okay. yeah. All my siblings, I'm pretty open with them, mm-hmm. so, it's just, it's a little rough with my mom, because, like I said, she's, like, older, like, very older generation. Catholic. We grew up Catholic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you religious now? Um, I believe in a higher power. I believe there's something out there. I don't necessarily go to church, you know. But so I, you're not walking around saying, "Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus." And all I that mean, shit. I I do have. There's a saying that my mom always says, "Si Dios quiere," like God willing. You know, I mm. do say that a lot. And yeah. I mean, for me, God is like a good, greater a, a greater power, something greater yeah. than myself. They would say. Yeah, everyone. No one believes in God until 
the police get behind them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God, don't let this nigga pull me over. <laughs> and they don't never pray. So, yeah. yeah. Bullshit yeah. to me. Um, so you grew up in Southern California. Uh, yeah. High school. What type of person were you in high school? Oh, man. I was like, like they would call. I mean, I played sports. I played soccer um, for three years. I wasn't good. But I, you know, I enjoyed yeah. it. I did track, um, cross country. Like I said, I wasn't the best athlete, but I mm. really enjoyed it. I think that's like another thing that kept me from doing drugs and joining these, you know, like it just kept me from doing all that. Like, mm. I think I got pretty lucky because I have friends that got into it pretty quick. Yeah. Did your mom ever remarry? She had a boyfriend. Mm. Um, but, you know, I have older bl- brothers. Yeah. So... Whenever that boyfriend came to the house, you know, my brother, he saw him, he would chase him away. Wow. <laughs> it was, yeah. Um, so after high school, what what happened after high school? Uh, I went to, um, not culinary school, I went to a city college, Pasadena mm. City College. I did that for, I did like a year, like pretty solid year. And then I got into some, you know, I started doing some drugs, mm. started partying a lot, going out to the club. Why is that? Um, I just like got into it. It was fun. It was. Fun. I mean, well, you could have you could have easily got into that shit in high school, and you said you didn't. I didn't. I. So I don't what know. changed? Did you change as a person? I think it's the people that I hung out with. Mm-hmm. I think I was influenced by you know the my circle for sure. Mm. Um, I still like I still worked. Uh, like I still made money. I used to have a little hustle. Like my mom when when I was uh, so. For Latinos, like the quinceañeras, right? Like my my mom, when I was uh, turning 15, she asked me like, do you want like a quinceañera or do you want to start a little business? And I started a little side hustle. Mm. Um, I started selling at the flea market. Um, so I always had money. So when, when it came down to partying, like I still like try to go to school and like try to keep some sense of normalcy with doing the flea market on the weekends. But it was just, you know, you can't, I mean, it just catches up to you. What were you selling? I was, so I used to sell leather products. I used to sell leather belts, products, leather, leather oh. products. Sorry, my accent, huh? So you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> leather products, like what? Like uh, belts, uh, belts and shit? Belts, men's belts, uh, wallets. I used to sell socks. Where the hell were you getting all this shit from? Uh, downtown LA. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, I, I think I was like one of the, kids in high school i used to like in the beginning i would always have money on me in high school mm. and then everyone would be like myra buy me this buy me that and they got to the point where i was like nope i'm yeah. like taking ten dollars and that's my lunch yeah, i used to have a shit ton of money in high school too that yeah. because i used to steal uh, money on my dad's wallet my oh. dad used to he never kept money in the bank uh-huh. and his wallet would be like oh. this fat full of like money and he was a drunk so he every time he goes to sleep, I'll just take money out. And he 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 didn't even know how much money was in his fucking wallet. So I'll, on the weekends, I would go to my boy's house with like two or three hundred dollars, and we would just ball the fuck out. Yeah. Imagine like being like in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Yeah. Wow. Just balling out with that much money. That's crazy. Not a lot of friends then. But, no, I mean I did, but <laughs> it was we were a small, close a circle. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> Pasadena City College. Do you, what were you studying? I was trying to be a, a teacher. Mm. I wanted to be a, like a high school teacher, elementary mm-hmm. school teacher. So I was taking a lot of child development, all the general ed. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in, tra- in cross country in Pas- at Pasadena City College. But once, like I said, once you get into that circle, you start missing classes. Yeah. Uh, eventually dropped out and started, um, Started working. I used to sell auto insurance mm-hmm. at some point. Um, okay. To work for my sister, kind of admin stuff, you know, working at an office and still trying to like go out. Um, you weren't addicted to anything, were you? Or you were just I doing drugs I was casually. Six, I think it's casually, but I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, I stopped. So, mm. but I mean, was it easy for you to just stop? So. I saw, I, it's kind of funny, but I saw an <laughs> Oprah show about drugs. Yeah, that would do it to you. And Oprah. that same day I saw that show, I flushed my drugs. And the, my girlfriend at the time, 
you know, I told her, I was like, hey, if you want to like continue to like be with me, let's, you know, let's stop mm -hmm. and flush the drug. Then I stopped. you never done it since. I mean, I've done, you know, some <laughs> stuff, but not like I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still smoked a little bit of weed, but I never, I stopped doing the hard drug. Yet. Yeah. Well, weed, I don't even think it's a drug. It's yeah. kind of like a medicine <laughs> to me. Yeah. Um. So when did you, well, what, what made the move from L.A. to the Bay Area? Uh, so that was in 2006, I believe, 2006, 2007. Um. My partner at the time, uh, she had some family living in Concord, mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of, we just stayed in their back house. We came over, and that was right around the time where I, I had the restaurant. I, and it just kind of just failed. I needed, I like I said, I you know I I think it's very much running away from home. So you were follow you were following her here. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if she, but if she would have stayed in LA, you would have stayed in LA. Probably. Mm. Yeah. What was her reasoning for coming here? Um, I think also just getting away. I mean, it was like we were in the we were in the party, like in that party environment kind of mm. situation. Yeah. Have you ever been up here beforehand? I visited with my brother. You know, we would come and visit. Um, mostly San Francisco, mm. Tahoe, um, Sonoma. Yeah. Do you like uh, Northern California better? Oh yeah, for sure. I don't see myself. Moving even every time I go back home, like I don't see myself opening up something over there. Maybe in the future, mm. but I I don't see a future there right now for myself. Mm. Yeah. So you when you get up here, you're new. You have to establish yourself. How? What was your what was your move? What were you doing? Um, I started like I so I continue to sell at the flea market, Laney Laney Flea Market. That's where I started selling still selling the belts and the wallets and all this stuff. And mm. I was making really good money at the time. I only worked the weekends. And then, um, so Concord, I stayed there for like six months mm. and then eventually made it to, I moved to Richmond, uh, got a little studio there with my partner and then um, started going to culinary school at Laney. What made you go to culinary school? I wanted to learn. I wanted to know what I was doing in the kitchen. You know, I okay. wanted to... Makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean... I would, I don't know. I've always been called towards like owning a business, especially in food. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I kind of started there. Um, when I graduated Laney, uh, started working at a lot of mom and pop places, you know, I was undocumented. So a lot of my friends from culinary school started working at really nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just couldn't do it cause I, you know, these places, they, they check, they screen. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. You um, you didn't have, you run into any hurdles being uh, undocumented? Oh, yeah, for sure. With all um, these jobs and shit that you had? Uh, I couldn't get a scholarship. I couldn't get any of that. Um, no FAFSA, not, not, no no help whatsoever in college. Mm. So kind of had to pay for things, um, culinary school. Um, and that's why, that's another reason why I went to Laney College instead of one of these like, you know, fancy culinary schools because it was what I could afford. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, here I am. I mean, you're a, you, you're a citizen now, right? I'm a resident. A resident? Yeah. I got two more years how do, <laughs> <laughs> to become a citizen. How does that, how does it, how is, well, I mean, explain that. How do you become a resident? You just have to be here for a long time? No, I actually, I married my, um, my partner, my- The one that you moved here now. with? Yeah, we're, okay. we're divorced now, but- uh, when gay marriage became legal, you mm -hmm. know, we were together for about nine years at the time when gay marriage became legal. When did gay marriage become legal? It was, uh, I don't know, 2012, I think. Oh, okay. Maybe. No, 2016. Well, when not. did you guys get married? Well, right, right after it became right. legal. As soon as the law. Yeah, it was like two months <laughs> in. We're like, we're doing this. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, it's all the benefits, right? Like. Mm. I was able to apply for a business loan. I was able to open up a business easier. Mm. Um, and just being able to travel. Yeah. I mean, not being able to go to Mexico, not being able to go anywhere. Um, you know, it's scary to be an immigrant, to be undocumented. Why did you guys get divorced? 
A uh, lot of reasons. I think, you know, I we were not high school sweethearts, but we, you know, we went to high school together. We connected right after high school and just she wanted to move back to L.A. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to move back to L.A. And we just like just kind of dissolved like it just wasn't working. So it wasn't worth fighting for. It was, I guess not. I mean, we fought for <laughs> almost 10 years. Like, mm. but though, you know how the struggles. Okay. I mean, we were kids. Like, uh, as you grow older. Was it a messy divorce? No. I mean, we're like, we're really good friends now. So, mm. I mean, it took us a while. Like, after we didn't talk for a couple, like, maybe two years. Mm. And um, now we're good. I mean, I, he's like family. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you had all these businesses. Where did you, where do you think, um, you got all that mindset, right? To My be mom. like your mom's? Yeah. Always working. She mm -hmm. had a little business too on the weekends. Um, my my siblings too. Like they, yeah, I think it's from that. Do you think um, that's big? Like, like being an entrepreneur, owning your own shit. Do you think that's like big in Mexican culture? Oh yeah. Because like, when you see um I know this is a stupid example when you see when you when you see the 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 women on the street right in front yeah. of the gas station with the flowers or the guy with the shit the truck with all the watermelons and the yeah. mangoes and shit. I mean, you might look at that and be like, "Oh, it's just some fruit," but that's business that's to me oh, that's yeah. like a business mindset. Yeah, for sure it is. It is. I mean, and they're all I mean, you don't ever see black people, you don't ever see white people or Chinese people doing that, you know what I'm saying? No, you don't. And I mean, a lot of those folks are undocumented. Mm -hmm. It's hard for them to get a good job, you know? So do you think it's, it's just like Mexican culture to, to do yeah, shit like that? You gotta hustle. You gotta yeah. hustle. You gotta find a way. I mean, a lot of... I, I have a lot of cooks or people that work for me or that I've experienced over time working in kitchens. Um, they come here, they make money and they send it all back. You know, they're, they're trying to... They're working doubles, you know? They're working mm -hmm. two jobs. They got family in their country. Um, and they're just trying to provide, mm. trying to provide a better life for them. I mean, a lot of these people, they, they have a, they have a set time, you know, we're going to be out here for 10 years, Yeah, send some money, make something, make a little house over there, start a little business. That's a lot of what I hear from like the common thing is mm. sending money back home to start a business. Once they're ready, you know, they go back. Mm. Yeah. I mean, some people stay, some people eventually, but nowadays, like how expensive it is, it is to, you know, get your family to come out here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, I mean, you opened up business. What's the hardest thing? I think for, for me at least, or for me and my business partner, I think the hardest thing, um, when we first opened up Chingones is, getting a space right so um we couldn't find a, a place <clears throat> that would lease like a, a location to us because well we were both undocumented right mm -hmm. um and we couldn't we didn't have like you know the financials um we we didn't the bank accounts with like you know you just don't have that kind of information yeah. so when you're trying to lease the space it, it's really difficult that's how we ended up i mean that's how we were just doing pop-ups unless we got an investor or someone, you know, that was able to back us fully. Um, we've never gone that route. Um, and when we came to Fort Greene, it was because we were looking for a commissary kitchen. Uh, and I saw their ad on Craigslist um, that they were looking for someone to sublease the kitchen partially, right? Mm -hmm. um, for, you know, just as a commercial kitchen. Um when we met with them, uh, we eventually, like, I jokingly said, like, we could, you know, take over the kitchen, like, full time. And it kind of just went from there. So who, who's your business partner? His name is Tino. Mm -hmm. He's from Mexico also. He's from Guerrero, Mexico. Um, How did you guys meet? We worked together. Yeah, I was, I was his manager. Um, and when I... I, uh, the manager, the flea market manager at Laney, I would always tell him like, Hey, I'm almost done with school. Like, give me a chance to sell some food here at the flea market. Mm -hmm. And he would always tell me, you're not ready. And I, you know, I, I don't know. He kept saying that. I don't think you're ready yet. I don't think you're ready. And then, uh, I kept pushing it and pushing it. And then he's like, all right, 
get your stuff together and then I'll give you a spot to sell at the flea market. Mm. And that's, you know, and we, I, he was the guy, he, he would do events on the weekend. Mm. Um, so I knew he, he knew what he was doing and he was like, going to support me in, in the way that I needed. So, you know, he's a hard worker. That's what you want. You want someone that's dedicated, that has passion um, to be able to match, match with you. It's hard. I mean, being a, having a business partner in, in itself, it's hard. It's like a marriage, you would say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how we started. We had a lot of help from friends and family. Um, uh, mostly friends is my, my entire family's in SoCal. Mm. Um, but yeah, we started there, Laney Flea Market every Sunday. <clears throat> so, I mean, business partners, you said it was hard to have a partner. I, I think it's hard to have a partner in anything, period. Yeah. I mean, when I think of that, I think of like, this is like a music group. Everyone has to be on the same page. Everyone yeah. has to like this song. Maybe one person doesn't like the way the song or the beat, and then another person might like the beat, and then it, conflict. Yeah. Um. Did you experience any anything like that with your business partner? Um. At the start. Uh, I think in the beginning of things, it was it ran pretty smooth. I think. Um. Over time, things got a little bit more difficult, right? Because um, it's it's like the work ethic kind of situation. It's like, um, you know, we often like have little quarrels or like we don't meet eye to eye in, um, in certain things. And it's mostly because like my business partner is like a workaholic, you know, he, mm. like he says, um, he came to this country to work and um, I was brought here, you know. I like, this is my life. You know, I want to have some kind of balance, Mm -hmm. work-life balance, I guess. Still trying to figure that out. But if I'm able to give that to myself, then why not? And for them, it's like work, 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 work. What is his, does he have a certain position, uh, things that he does and things that you do? Uh, I feel like right now I've taken more of the admin, administrative, like uh, all the paperwork, um, talking to people, trying to make connections. Mm. And he's kind of like more in the kitchen, you know, he's in the back. He's uh, more a kitchen manager. So he's like, chef. he's a cook too. Yeah. He's a okay. cook. So we have a cook background, both of us. Mm. Um, so he's more in the back. I'm more in the front, more involved in the front. I'm like more of a face to the company than he is. Even mm. though like people, I mean, they know part owner. Yeah. But he's like, um, I've taken more of a face to it than he has for sure. So how long have you guys been at Fort Green? Uh, we've been there, uh, it's going to be, it's been four years already. Mm. Um, so we started there in 2019. Mm. Uh, so we had a full year before COVID. Hit. Okay. And, um, 2019, yeah, 20, 2020, we had opened our bar second pop-up location at Emporium in Oakland. Mm. And that lasted about two and a half months because then COVID hit and then we just shut down. Was COVID, uh, I mean, some businesses last uh i mean not lasted but some some businesses flourished during covid and some businesses failed closed down and shit yeah for sure where were you at um it felt like we were gonna fail Mm -hmm. uh we closed for like two weeks you know mostly because i wanted to close for two weeks i don't know what the fuck was going on yeah and um after two weeks we opened up and like the first the first like six eight months it felt like we were gonna you know we were gonna fail for sure um and then we slowly started working with uh nonprofits, providing meals and that's what really kept us going you know um our focus uh opening back up was like keeping our staff employed because mm. i mean you know they're not getting any of the benefits yeah they're how are they gonna pay their bills mm-hmm. um so with whatever business would come in, I mean, for the first three to six months, it was tough because like there was a lot of just sitting, waiting for customers to order, mm. you know, um, it was yeah, fun the, though. The, honestly. the whole DoorDash shit. Yeah, we did. We did DoorDash. We were like doing the fucking, what is it? Like, um, forget the term, curbside pickup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did the, um, we, I mean, I tried in so many different ways to. We were doing like family meals, like uh, delivery on mm. our own. I was just trying to make it work. Mm. 
And we got connected with uh, World Central Kitchen, like many of the restaurants in Oakland. Mm. And that's re- what really kept us going. What's, what, what is that? World Central Kitchen is a nonprofit that was providing meals for the community. Um, community like homeless people? Homeless people, just not even just homeless people, like families. We were, mm. we were providing meals for, for elementary schools. We were dropping off to elementary schools. We were dropping off to uh, different zones in East Oakland, West Oakland, uh, Richmond. Um, and I personally would do, like they give you the option whether you want to deliver or you want someone to pick it up. I would, I like to deliver the food because I wanted to see where it was going. I wanted to see what kind of people were standing in line Mm -hmm. to pick up these meals. A lot of the meals were hot meals. Some were cold meals. Um, And yeah, like that's what kept our staff employed. Like, oh, so, so the nonprofit was paying you guys to make the meals. We were, yeah, we were getting paid. We were getting paid a Mm. base rate. Uh, We provided a meal. You know, like uh, something good, like you wanted to provide something that you would eat yourself. So that's, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what we did. Um, and yeah, that's what kept was us this going. A, was this a program that was established because of COVID or was this program already here? The program is uh, like known worldwide. Mm. Um, and when COVID hit, it was it's like it came to Oakland. Just amplified it. Yeah, for okay. sure. Um, it's a, I can't <clears throat> pronounce his name and I can't even remember right now, but he's a famous chef. Um, and he started this nonprofit, World mm. Central Kitchen. I mean, they do, they go to disaster zones everywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah. Sounds dope. Yeah. So you are, in, you have a kitchen in a bar. So how, how does that work out? Like, does a, are you not allowed to be open unless the bar is open? Um, no, uh, the bar is not allowed to be open unless we're open. Oh, yes. So Chicones is the main focus of Fort Green. Well, Fort Green is a main focus because we're subleasing the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they've, you know, it's their spot. We just sublease. They own the space. Mm. Um, yeah. But during COVID, the bar wasn't open, right? The bar wasn't open. It was just it was you just guys. Us. It was okay. just us. We're doing, like I said, and it was good mm. times. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I yeah. Bet. Um, I don't know what I was about to ask. I always, always wonder, like, when pe- when people start new businesses, especially when it comes to, like, f- when it has anything to do with food. Like, before you open, where do you get all your, like, sh- materials from? Like, where do you get the meats and where do you get the tortillas or whatever the fuck you're cooking? Like, where do you get all this stuff from? I mean, over time, you learn the tricks, right? Like, managing kitchens, working at restaurants. Mm. You kind of see, observe, learn. Mm. Um I mean, I felt like that's what I was doing at all these mom and pop places, right? I was like learning, trying to see what was going on, um, how things work. And that was like the best, the best experience because if like for me, the, the, like the place that I have, Chingones is fast casual, right? So yeah. it's, it's not fine dining. We're not like using toothpicks. It's just like comfort food. Mm-hmm. It's comfort food. Um, not a crazy expensive, you know. Um, so we, there's, we work like for our tortillas, we work with La Finca. They're one of like the biggest uh, tortilla providers in Oakland. You know, they're, I mean, one of the owners, like he comes to Chingones to eat. He loves, he loves a first Friday taco. He loves the fried chicken. He loves the tacos. Mm. They come and eat um, for our veggies. We go to um, Jack London, like the, the markets in the morning. Mm. There's a produce market. That's where we get our produce. Um, and then our meats, we go to restaurant depot. We are doing Cisco, one of the big companies, you know, uh, we try to use halal for the most part, but we do not, we do not brand ourselves halal because we do pork in house. Are these, uh, relationships that you had prior to opening Chaconas? Like, did you already have everything set in line or did you just open and like, oh yeah, we got to figure uh, this we, shit out? No, I think, uh, so there's a good friend of mine of ours. Because he's also a good friend of uh, of Tino's. Um, his name's Christian. He used to own Wing Wings in Lower Hate, a mm. wing shop. He was one of the guys that kind of helped us. You know, he was a guy that went and helped us get our fryers um, when we started doing the pop up. He's mm. the one that would tell us like where to buy this, where to get that, helped us with the permits. Mm. Um, for the beginning of it, he would sign off our commissary kitchen agreement. You know, saying. 
I mean, we would prep everything in his kitchen. He would allow mm-hmm. us to come in um, in the evenings and get everything ready for the weekends. You know, he the one that provided connections. Like, you know, I call him the godfather, godfather of chingones because without someone like him, you know, we, we wouldn't be here, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's a person that's been like, for sure, one of the biggest blessings for us. Mm. So with every business owner, there's always, I mean, the upside, oh yeah, we're employing people, we're making money, um, it's our dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's the negative side, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, uh, let's say like, um, what's that nigga's name? Um, the Tesla owner. Oh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yeah. <laughs> Elon. He probably gets sued like by thousands and thousands of oh, people yeah, on a daily, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you being a business owner, is there anything that happens with you, like employees, do you have to like fire people that you like really like, or is there like shit, people like suing you for like, Oh, I, I bit, I've been into this and uh, my tooth broke. I mean, knock on wood, we haven't got sued yet. (laughs) Um, I like to think that we treat our staff pretty well, you know, Mm. um, I I've, I've worked out a lot of places where it's it's not the, it's not a fun environment. Yeah. I mean, we're all there to work, right? Like they come into work, but you also want to provide like support to them, right? Want to mm. give them a good meal. Mm. You don't want to I mean, I've been to places where they would give you the leftovers or maybe not even give you a meal. What? <laughs> <laughs> um and like I I don't know, I feel like I I try to listen. I feel like a mom, honestly. When mm-hmm. it comes to like being a a boss, I guess you would say, because like you're, you know, these people, they're like they're, you know, we're they're everyday people. Some people are struggling. You have to try to be mindful about that. You know, I mean, yes, it is a job, but also like they're human. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's one one of my biggest struggles is being able to be a boss mm-hmm. without caring. Like I don't know how bosses not care. <laughs> Shit, I do. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, I struggle with that. Like, you know, I'm very, I struggle with how to be strict, Mm. how to like, Well, let me, let me ask you this. When, when people say, when they compare women who are CEOs and bosses, a lot of women say that in order to be in that role, you have to like be a bitch. Yeah. You have to like do shit that men do. Cause if men do the same thing they'll be like oh that guy is powerful and yeah. like he's stern and all that shit but when women seem to go women seem to think that in order to get respect in that that world or in that any p- yes. position of power they have to be extra hard do um, you agree with that i mean it makes sense right mm-hmm. it makes sense that you have to be that way i don't think like i don't see myself like that um, I am. I mean, I work in a kitchen or in kitchens where it's predominantly men. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. I don't think I come off like that. Um, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe. I mean, what you you feel like you are respected in your uh, I environment? Like yeah, so. yeah. I like to think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How important is it to you, um? for women to have business businesses and especially women of color oh man it's i mean we got to support each other right Mm. i think that's uh that's hard too like i i mean it would be great if there was like some kind of association or something where a women owner like women business owners would get together i don't know i don't think we have that in Mm. oakland that would be great that if we could have a day or like a month where You know, you have all these, like, for example, Latino Chamber of Commerce or the Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce or African American Chamber of Commerce. But I don't think I've heard of any women business owners getting together and, you know, supporting each other. I don't think we have that right now. Um, I mean, we should. Um, Yeah. I mean, we might (laughs) just start that. (laughs) You might as well start it. Yeah. Do you think there's a lot of you guys out here? Oh, yeah. Enough to start it? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of women in the culinary world, <laughs> mm. for sure. But are they, are they owners though? That I, I'm not sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, that's a good that's, question. That's, that's any any women business business owners hit me up. <laughs> Let's get together. <laughs> so what do you uh what else are you passionate about besides besides cooking? Uh, I've been working out a lot lately. Mm. I really like working out. Lifting is fun. Like CrossFit? No, not so much. Um, yeah, my knees are not the, you know, <laughs> I don't want to break something. Um, mm. Mostly like, I wouldn't say powerlifting, but, you, you know, like doing the free weights. I really mm. enjoy that right now. Try to get, you know, try to get that, try to eat healthy. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure, I mean, I would always say, like, I love traveling. Like, that's one of my passions. Unfortunately, at the time, I don't have as much flexibility to do so. Yeah. And that's another hard thing, being a business owner, trying to find that time to get away and mm. go on vacation. And, um, yeah, so right now, I think that's it. That's it. I, would, I mean, I don't cook as much as I used to at home. Mm. I cook all the time at the restaurant. So it's hard. It's hard to set aside that time to be able to, you know, make a meal at home, like a really nice meal. Do you feel like, do you feel America has a problem with um, food oh, and yeah, obesity? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I need to, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I tell, I, I mean, I mean, we do fried chicken, right? Yeah. We do fried chicken. I think it's like a healthier version of fried chicken because we don't like, we don't use buttermilk you know mm -hmm. it's like our coating is super light mm -hmm. um we make yeah like i we have some you know there's like ways to get around certain things and still like eat reasonably healthy mm -hmm. but i think a lot of times you know the food we provide for our kids is not not that i have kids but i like the way i see people eating yeah. you know probably not the best yeah um i mean healthy food it's crazy because everyone says, well, everyone in politics say, oh, everyone needs to eat healthy, eat healthy, but they make it to where a healthy food is more expensive yeah. than like a bottle of, a bottle of good water is like four, three dollars. Yeah. But a, a, you so can get an Arizona, <laughs> for a dollar. you can get a big ass Arizona for a dollar, that yeah. sugary ass juice. So which one, if a person in middle class yeah. or a kid when he has like two dollars or three dollars, which one is he going to most likely to buy? He's going to buy that yeah. Arizona. Didn't have two dollars left. Oh, well, I'm going to get some chips too. Yeah. So, you being in the food space, do you think? Um, do you think that would ever change? Because if you go to other countries, let's say Japan, mm -hmm. I don't think there's like nine billion people in Japan, but only like four fat people. <laughs> which is crazy i mean that's those numbers are not actually factual but yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah, because of the, the shit that they eat out there i mean when i the first time i went to mexico i'll give you an example like they hardly like uh, they hardly ate meat mm -hmm. you know a lot of veggies a lot of grains like yeah. you know they they don't have that kind of, i mean and i didn't like most of the people they're not overweight you know they're always walking um but like for me, like them being able to splurge on a meal that over here, like that's what we eat on the regular basis. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer would be to that. Mm -hmm. Like how to help. I know when we do the community meals, we try to do like, you know, we, we do like a, a vegetable, a grain and the protein and mm -hmm. try to, we try to make it a, attractive to people, but also somewhat healthy. Mm -hmm. Right somewhat healthy because I mean the people that are getting these meals are but like you know people that are on in the street or that are I mean they don't have money for a, a nice meal what are they going to go to McDonald's yeah. you know and McDonald's you can get a meal for three dollars yeah Taco Bell <laughs> <laughs> what uh what meal would you cook on like if you were inviting a uh a, a a, a, future a future partner, partner. You know what I'm saying? What meal would you cook to try to impress her? Oh, man. Carne asada. That's it? Yeah, and some rice, some Mexican rice, some oh, salsa. God. That, that's normal as fuck. <laughs> not a good one. I mean, I, said, huh? I've, I don't cook. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going to cook a fancy, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I don't want to 
do something that I'm not going to be able to keep up with all the time. Yeah. Right. Do you, I mean, cooking is your job at work, right? But do mm. you, does that deter you to go home and cook? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so you never, you my, never cook at home? I hardly ever cook at home. Yeah. Even today I sense. went to the farmer's market <laughs> and mm. bought a bunch of veggies and I was going to make a meal and I just, I'm tired. I'm mm. tired. Yeah. I, I used to, I used to host parties at my house all the time like dinner parties mm. with my old partner make some ceviche or make some pasta and but i had more time you know yeah more space to be able to i had the help too i want to wash dishes <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite uh mexican dish my favorite mexican dish right now it's not even from where i was born but i really enjoy panuchos what is that panuchos is a dish from yucatan mm. mexico and it's uh, it's like a, a thick fried tortilla that's stuffed with beans, mm. with shredded chicken on top, uh, pickled um, red onions, tomato, a little bit of lettuce, and they make this like habanero salsa that's so good. Oh, so it's like it's it's you know, make remember it correct. It's like it's like like it looks like a taco, right? It looks like a taco that's like deep fried, and then you just dip it in this watery ass salsa and eat it. And eat or am it, I yeah. tripping? Oh, is that the same thing? It's, a, it's similar to it, but I don't know if we're... I need to take you. There's a <laughs> spot in the city that I like to go to. It's called uh, um, Milindo, Yucatan, I think it's called. Mm. But they... What part of the city? They're on 16th and uh, close to Mission. Oh, so it's in the Mission District. Yeah, Mission okay. District. And I used to... It's one of my old co-workers. He opened up a little spot yeah. in the Mission. So I got to yeah. support him. He's... I mean... I love I, me some tacos. Every time I have a day off, I want to get out there mm. and go get his food. Where do you see Chico? Am I saying it right? Chico, Chicones? Chingones. Chingones. Where do you see, I mean, where do you want this to go? Do you want to get out of um, Fort Greene and have a whole restaurant space? or? I mean, that, I think that we have like outgrown being a pop-up for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I would like to have a, our own location. Are you? I mean, you're not still considering yourself a pop up, though, are you? I mean, we. Tech, I mean, kind I mean, you've of. been there for years. It's like a you ain't popping pop up, up no more. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I mean, I want to. Yeah, I see my. I see ourselves uh, having our own location. You mm. know, I think we finally have all all that we need in order to open up our own location. Is that a like a five year goal or ten year goal for you? For our own location, mm -hmm. I think uh, hopefully by next year. By next year, yeah. Okay. What are you doing to accomplish that? Uh, so we're we're in the works right now, trying to we're talking to a a broker, trying to look for a spot. Mm. Um, we actually looked at a space here in West Oakland. Um, uh, but I think we're gonna we we want to be downtown, like close to where our current location is. <laughs> yeah, I mean. There ain't shit in West Oakland. So your shit will be like, you know Horn Barbecue down the street? Yeah. There's lines down the block for that shit every really? time it opens. Yeah, because I mean, there's, I think there's only like two places to get food yeah. I mean, in this area. That's Horn Barbecue and uh, that shit down, down the street, that little chicken uh, sandwich spot. You know what I'm talking about? The... It's new. The, it's like... The Cowbird place. Cowbird, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, it's, it's owned by the same Horn... Horn... What is it? Matt Horn? Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Um... We looked at the space uh, in West Oakland. I think it's a great opportunity. Mm. Um, but we're in the works right now. It's kind of low key. Like we're, I'm not really supposed to disclose, but we're looking at a place right now that would make more sense mm -hmm. for us right now, especially with the following we have um, downtown, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll know something within six months if we, we get this location or not. That's cool. Yeah. Was it easy for you guys to create a following? No. No? I mean, I still think right now, um, I think we could be a bigger, right? Um, I, I, there's a lot that other, uh, other restaurants have, like a lot of more support. Mm. And maybe it's because it, our investors are in the play, yeah. you know, more resources. Or maybe I haven't tapped into the resources I have. Um, but I think we could be a lot bigger. Mm. You know, I mean, but I feel like everyone could say that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dope. Well, it was great to hear your story, the origins of Chicontes. Chingones. <laughs> Chingones. I don't know why, but that sounds, I, I was thinking like that meant of like balls or something. No. <laughs> What's the word for balls in Spanish? Um, Peblos? No. Webos? Yeah, webos. webos, yeah. webos. Yeah, I'm getting shit mixed up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, tell the people if you want to give out your socials or tell the people like where they can find you or uh, your restaurant, where they can go. Uh, so we're located uh, in Old Oakland, 736 Washington Street. We're open Monday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. Um, follow me at Maida. You got my full name, Maida A. Velasquez. Um, yeah, come check us out. Food's good. And we got some good drinks also at the bar. So yeah, come, come say hi. Yeah. The chicken is, uh, I'll just say this. It's better than Popeye's. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Popeye's is good as hell. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, my, Myra, thank you for coming on. Um, Everyday Celebrity Podcast. Everyone go follow her. Uh, everyone go to Ch- Chicones. Chingones. Chingones. <laughs> yeah. And get some food. It's very, very, very delicious. Uh, any last words? He si said, puede. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Everyday Celebrity Podcast, and we are out. You.